Hey, what's up, folks? Um, first, I want to say that uh, I don't usually do this, but I have some notes that I prepared for this video because it uh, covers uh, a lot of points that I want to make. I usually kind of ad lib them, but today's a little bit different. So if you see me referring to this paper, it's my notes. Um, I've uh, had a couple emails recently that kind of like sparked this, uh, this thinking, and so I started writing it down and I wanted to put out a video. And um, we get emails from uh, other folks out there who are bending Kydex and getting involved in uh, some difficult projects, as well as uh, individuals who want us to take on something custom. And over the years, as a result of trial and error experience and making my own mistakes, I've uh, developed a little bit of philosophy about this. Now, uh, let me preface this by saying that what we make with Kydex already kind of pushes the limits of what they intended this material to do. You know, uh, it used to be for like static fixtures and enclosures for, um, you know, other equipment and what we use it for, stuff that's, you know, pretty dynamic insofar as it has to like flex and see a higher level of abuse than other stuff. It's already more than uh, what they had in mind when they designed this. You know, this was for like signs and uh, uh, other kind of like things that are going to stay stationary and maybe get like bumped around externally, but not have to like flex and get used and get beat to death the way we use, like the way we use it for in terms of like hard use tactical equipment. So making holsters with this stuff is already pretty advanced for the material. And half of our job is to manage the client's expectations, right? Um, when somebody approaches me for something custom, I run through the following checklist in my head. You know, A, easy, what do they want? Why do they want it? What do they expect out of this system? Does a solution already exist? And does that solution uh, perform well already? Is that insofar as, does the solution do everything I would want it to do. How much does it cost? And is it readily available? And uh, the last two questions that I ask are, is what I'm making something that has to be made out of Kydex or similar material? And is that material choice going to actually improve the user's experience of this equipment, right? Um, I could make appendix carry holsters out of floppy fabric. I pick this material because it improves that experience in a number of ways that I would want to see it improved. You know, so you run through that checklist, and if you're if you don't get enough yeses on that checklist, then point them in another direction. So, for example, if somebody comes to me and they say, "John, I want like a double or triple AR-15 mag carrier out of Kydex," well. I would never make that for myself. Considering what I can go out and buy a inexpensive, readily available, high-performing product like, uh, like a piece of uh, nylon gear from uh, HSGI or SOE gear, it's not even worth it for me to make it. You know, I could spend a couple hours making something like that and not come up, you know, and not come up with something that performs as well as an HSGI taco, for example. You know, that's going to fit, you know, the mags for all the rifles that I have, which I'm not necessarily going to be able to do out of Kydex in an amount of time that's really worth it for me to invest in it. So, why are you taking your customer's money for something that they can get better and cheaper somewhere else? You know, uh, so expand that out to other wilder projects. Does somebody want like an entire chest rig made out of Kydex and it's going to do like all this crazy stuff? Well, how many hours are you going to invest in that? Is it going to be as safe and as high performing as a solution that already exists? Now, um, this is kind of a generalization, but in my experience, most of the emails that I get from somebody who wants like a, you know, like a holster that they can carry uh, 
in their like tactical bag and in the small of their back and mount into their vehicle and attach it to their nightstand, that's going to be painting with a broad brush. That's going to be somebody who's kind of new to guns, new to carrying a gun, and wants like the miracle one thing that does it all. Now, you know, that we're, we're talking about somebody who's relatively low information. You know, in this case, making them what they want is going to result in a high cost, low performing item. Now, this person is new to carrying a gun. They just spent a lot of money on something that supposedly, you know, from everything they've heard, just like wonder material that everybody likes and is super trendy. They don't know that much. They went out and spent a lot of their money on something that doesn't work the way they had it in their head. And now that's colored their entire experience with this material and getting custom gear. That's somebody who could have been a customer for all of us that we've now lost. So part of our responsibility is to steer customers into something that is going to work. Now, I'm not saying that you're obligated to make this thing like totally perfect and do all the things that they want it to do because you're not. Your obligation is to make them a piece of equipment that performs in a way that's going to satisfy the claims you make about it. So um, that is to say it's better to have one piece of gear that they're really happy with that does one thing really well rather than trying to fulfill the kind of like crazy fantasy idea they have in their head just because they have the opportunity to get something custom. Um, that puts us all in a situation where you, you, you have a customer who's going to get turned off because they're not happy. And they might color everything that way. And I'm not saying don't be creative. And I'm not saying don't push boundaries or do fun projects because that's something that we do all the time. We've made like the, the Star Wars holsters and I made a whole, uh, 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 made a Kydex carrier for an SBR. That's like useless and fun, you know? And I'm not I'm not above doing stuff that's like relatively useless and fun or sitting down and just making something for the sake of making it. But I'm doing that on my own dime. I'm doing that on my time. I'm doing that after work. And if somebody wants something crazy like that, I'm basically going to do it for free on my own time. So I'm not taking somebody's money for something that looks cooler than it actually performs. So when you're getting involved in fielding these custom projects, you know, people are going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to go, oh, that's cool, Kydex, I've heard everybody talking about that, i got to get me some of that. And they come to you with, you know, their bunk bed backpack, small the back, motorcycle, helicopter mounted, you know, widget that comes with the two mag carriers on the holster and fits the, you know, piece of crap light they bought from the gun show is your responsibility as the expert that they're going to or at least perceived expert to make them something that's going to be safe and if what they have in their head isn't safe in terms of functionality isn't safe in terms of uh, tactics and application in terms of like what's contemporary you know what do you know that works that holds up what designs and what features are things that are proven. If you're going to take somebody's money and supply them with something that doesn't satisfy that, I'm, uh, I'm going to be a little disappointed, not that, you know, for whatever two cents that counts for. So just keep it in mind when you're fielding custom projects. Manage the customer's expectations, and while they might not get exactly what they envisioned in, your, in their head, provide them with something that's safe and effective and works the way it's designed. Something that they're going to have forever and something that's going to give them a good impression of what we do. So uh, it's better to disappoint them on the front end than it is to disappoint them on the back end, if, if that makes any sense. So uh, just wanted to let you know where we're coming from on that. thought I'd share these ideas. I hope that makes sense. So um, I, as always, if you're having problems with a project, give us a give us a uh, email but you know 
more often than not, my first question is going to be, why are you making this? <laughs> not, not to be discouraging, but the, the question is, you know, you, you know, the answer might be, you're having a problem with this because maybe it's not meant to be. Um, which isn't to say it can't be done, and which isn't to say you shouldn't do it to explore the idea, but keep in mind that there's somebody who's relying on this piece of equipment at the end of all of this, beyond just the craftsmanship that you and I experience.